I'm Commander Cory, and this is my favorite playthrough on YouTube. Last time on Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition. Hello, my beautiful nerds and welcome back to yet another episode of Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty right here on Missile Dad on Live. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another Mass Effect 2 video. We're trying to get these out as quickly as possible. And hey, if you could do me a huge favor, leaving a like or a comment on these videos really helps propel them into the algorithm so that hopefully we can have some more people uh, finding one of the best, the best Mass Effect walkthrough in the entirety of the YouTubes. Uh, that's 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 mine. So um, maybe, you know, leave a comment and a like and tell your friends. Also, a huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres of these videos and an even bigger shout out to those of you supporting the channel over on patreon.com slash missile online. Link is in the description below. Speaking of links in the description below, in today's episode, we are going to be starting the DLC Overlord, which is a highly controversial DLC because of the way that it uh, portrays and deals with autism. And I uh, it is one of those that it hasn't aged well. Um, it was a problem when it first came out. It's even more of a problem now, and you will see why. So I threw some links into the description below, uh, some that are uh, kind of teaching you a little bit about what autism is and organizations that are helping uh, people with autism uh, deal with it. So ages ago we got a message that we went actually and we archived from uh basically when we first started the game which is titled overlord so if we go ahead and we'll find that now if you uh if you're not playing on legendary edition and you just installed the game uh you can install this dlc basically whenever uh we got a message from the elusive man one of our cells just went off the grid without explanation. Project Overlord has been experimenting with highly volatile technology, and I need you to investigate. Their work is extremely carp car compartmentalized. Enough that I can't divul divulge operational details over this channel. You'll find them on the planet Aita, Typhon system, in the Phoenix Massing Cluster. Please use care in this matter. And that, my friends, is exactly where we're going to go. Now, if we go ahead and look at our journals, a little bit of housekeeping stuff before we move on. We do have this in seven mission, and we also have a rival, which we will not be doing until after we complete the main story of Mass Effect 2, because that's when it makes the most sense. We do still have Tally's loyalty mission, and we will be doing it. However, we will be doing it after we receive the Reaper IFF for reasons that you will see, and uh, very rare reasons, in fact, and it is very uncommon to see what you're going to see in this playthrough, but, you know, because of me, I can, I can show you. Uh, so, that will be dealt with. I do want to say, with that caveat, that if you wanted to lock in any romances, now would be the time to do so. Make sure that you are talking to your romantic partner or interest, whoever you are deciding to romance, start talking to them until it's very clear that they're flirting with you. Typically, they'll give you an option that's like, are you sure you want to do this? And you have the option of saying yes or no. Um, and you could have multiple and eventually they'll want you to settle for just one. No one's really that polyamorous in this. Uh, I will have a video that's showing all of the romances in this game, but I just want to point that out. Before you do too many missions, you do want to make sure that those romantic uh, conversations have already started. So this way, you you because usually you have to go and then and then go do a mission and then come back and talk to them and they'll the romance will progress and you want to make sure that you're you have enough missions to be able to do that so i would highly recommend uh starting those up now for us though we're going to the phoenix massing system to see about this cerberus cell this overlord cell and see if we can maybe uh see what's going on and while this is obviously fairly controversial uh and for very good reason it is also a, f a good DLC, a fun DLC to play with, and it fills out the story in uh, some kind of neat ways. Now, there is uh, some character that we will get after we do the Reaper IFF, uh, and that character in particular has one line in the entirety of the Overlord DLC, so it's actually not really worth... You actually... it's kind of bad if you get that character and then do this um so i will show you that dialogue 
uh, but keep in mind, it's not that important. On the first planet we can scan, Echidna here, we can actually find some element zero, which is going to put us, my friends, over 100,000 element zero, which is uh, just, a, just a wonderful thing. Planet Moros is also a, another planet that has element zero on it, so feel free to scan as much as you think you will need. It's also worth mentioning, I just think it's cool, about the planet Moros is it, every city-state from the nearby planet of Ite, which we are about to head to, has claimed the rights to exploit this planet's minerals. We just kind of scoop up and probe it, but hey, they have to go and do it. Uh, and each of the small city-state's governments maintain three habitats that are as far away as possible on Moros, but they still get into wars all the time. And in fact, uh, they have such large numbers of anti-personnel and anti-vehicular mines at common choke points that you can't actually navigate the, you can't actually navigate. So you, you don't go there, but we are going to head to the planet of Ait, where we will be able to start undertaking the first, uh, the second of the DLC for Mass Effect 2. And what's really cool about this planet is it actually possesses faint rings, which mostly doesn't exist on non, uh, non-giant planets. It is an Earth-like world as well, and has uh, a few colonies on there. Although, no matter what, even with those colonies, the moon of Ait, Lyta, is in an unstable orbit and is predicted to impact the planet within the next two centuries. So no matter what, this planet is going to be destroyed in the next 200 years. We are going to pick a squad here, and I would recommend bringing uh, somebody like Miranda. Now, it isn't doesn't really matter who you end up picking for this mission because uh, there's no real dialogue. I will show you the one dialogue from the character, and I will show it to you once we have gotten that character. We haven't received them yet, so I don't want to spoil it. So it will be in a future episode i'll show you the one line of dialogue from overlord uh but you can basically choose whoever you want for this mission in fact the one character never even really says anything someone says something about them uh so we're going to go ahead and we are going to pick a party of miranda who i would recommend because this is of course a cerberus operation and she has warp and overload and we're actually going to go ahead and bring morden with us as well who's not incredibly strong for this mission uh when it comes to gameplay however morden is a scientist and i think he would want to see what's happening here at cerberus and maybe he can figure it out tally would also be another great choice for this uh because she'll be able to deal with all of the synthetic enemies we will be encountering and also it just kind of makes sense for her to experience as much of this as she can i've changed my mind we're taking tally checking out our builds we're waiting to max out this cryo ammo for squad and waiting to max out uh overload on miranda and waiting to max out ai hacking on tally which will then be swapped to energy drain Interesting. We'll notice that the hammerhead is out here, which is kind of strange. And there's actually some items that we can find on this platform that we first start at. Immediately, Gavin Archer coming and telling us what's going on. I just wanted to show this area and how absolutely amazing that looks. Look at those mountains. It looks so cool. But our job is to take down that satellite dish and retract it because it is trying to beam a very, very bad thing. We'll go ahead and open this palladium that we can grab here. That door does not open, but we'll grab that. And we'll grab the one that's on the other side as well here. That being the main door that we need to use, but that is our target. Over on the other side of this platform, we can find some power cells. We will actually find no less than six power cell containers on this mission. Now, we don't really need to use any of our heavy weapon, so it's not that big of a deal. But, uh, well, let's, let's switch, switch to the plasma shotgun. Uh, but it is kind of, whoops, it is kind of neat that that's even a thing. Putting our inferno ammo on, we'll continue on. We will be experiencing a lot of synthetics here. Yeah, well, we're not gonna do that. This looks... 
Well, looks like that's Gavin Archer. Let's see if he has anything to say about. There you are. Hi. You got it, Gavin Archer. Looking around. Looks like Cerberus took an L here at this facility yet again. We can actually go ahead and break this glass here. And potentially, we could actually just jump over it. How cool is that? We can also find this med station that we can open for 100 credits, and we're finding a lot of dead Cerberus. These doors don't really have anything for that. That's the way that we have to go, so we're going to... Whoops, excuse me. We're going to open this first, and we're going to recover funds from this terminal, and we'll go ahead and listen to Archer's log. Please inform the elusive man that we've made great strides in our research. His doubts about the lack of progress are unwarranted. A demonstration is forthcoming. Okay, so it looks like the elusive man didn't really think what they were doing here was going to be useful. And I don't trust these cameras, so let's get rid of those. Coming in here, we'll find somebody with a pistol. Looks like they may have taken their own life. Interesting. Miranda, you have anything to say? We can listen to yet another one of Archer's logs. Maybe Gavin's right. Maybe handling live Geth like Cerberus was attempting to do would help us out. Doesn't seem like that's what happened. Let's go ahead and retract the dish. Look at that. Easy come, easy go. Mission done. Oh, shit. Sounds good to me. Leftover VI still showing up occasionally. How's how that is? It's a little terrifying. Anyways, we're gonna continue on being watched by this VI. It knows we're here. That sound effect is just oh. I'm guessing we are about to run into a VI taking over everything break that camera because it's taken over the cameras I knew it would didn't I tell you all that it would and it did you're welcome there's a PDA here that we can examine apparently the geth that they were testing on is broken free we'll grab 525 credits from that PDA are you kidding me Cerberus you're broke you broke go ahead and switch to this VI still doing that. I don't like those cameras, so I'm shooting them. It's worth mentioning you don't have to do that. I'm just being weird. <laughs> that sounds pretty tasty, but as we proceed in here, we'll go ahead and take care of this camera. Again, it doesn't matter, but... And just like that, we are going to be attacked by Geth, and not just a couple of Geth, a lot of Geth. We're going to go ahead and destroy the shields on this destroyer, send out a drone, get into cover, and we're going to go ahead and hope that we can charge here, taking down uh, while trying to. You can see that these guys have actually been what appears to be overridden, hacked, if you will, by uh, the AI that is now in charge of this research facility the Cerberus facility yet again Cerberus us having to clean up their mess as we go but we can vanguard through this and destroy absolutely everything grabbing this med station as we go and these power cells told you there's a lot of power cells in there we can also get some more there's also right here we can recover funds from the cafe register which is super weird and hopefully we can't get a lock on this guy but I think we'll be able to write there we go what up And that's not the last wave of Geth that we will be facing. More Geth are going to start coming towards us. This is a Geth-heavy mission. We're going to take them all down as much as we can. Grabbing this ammo here. We're not needing it because we are full, baby. 
the music here. Geth entering from this room over here. We're going to start taking him down. Recharge our shields as soon as we can. Watch out for the rocket. Ooh, that was close. Ooh, I just almost died. Wait for our shields to come back just a bit here. Thank you. And we'll charge now as soon as we can. Taking out, hopefully, this rocket trooper. But we're not done yet because we also have a Geth Destroyer here that we are going to hopefully take out. Now, here's the thing about Geth Destroyers. Once their shields are removed, if you overload them, they'll actually explode. So you don't have to waste any other time. Remove their shields, strip them of the shields, save an overload for taking that out. When it happens, we'll go ahead and just melee this Geth to death. Something about meleeing AI machines just feels good to me. Not as good as a Krogan, but still pretty good. Let's see, now we have some time. If we wanted to loot the place, we could. We kind of already did, so we don't have to worry too much. We got everything that we, we really can. However, there is a door over here that we did not use, and it is one that we uh, does not lead to our next destination. So let's go in here. We'll grab Memo Archer's log. Personnel. Congratulations on your hard work. Tomorrow we make the next leap forward. It'll be a great day for Cerberus and an even greater day for humanity. Unfortunately for them, they did not take that great step forward. Something bad happened before that, but we can grab that wall safe for 1,125 credits very uh weird the, the the amount of money they're giving us in this mission now we already explored down there uh so we don't really have to and we want to head to where the geth were coming out of Let's see if maybe we can find out what's their source can we get this this dish down are you kidding me you're playing classical music and stuff in here salvage some credits there 525 credits is the vi playing music creepy oh it sure is because it just got all distorted 100 credits from that med station there seeing more dead cerberus operatives which you know it's not like cerberus is 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 good at least our shepherd doesn't feel that way it's sad i suppose but anyways let's go ahead and use this tram hopefully taking us into the dish that we need to shut down was a quick ride. Oh, okay. Well. Satellite broadcast window is opening soon. All upload data must be approved by your department supervisor. Looks like things didn't go well in this part of the station either. Was hoping that maybe the tram stopped some geth from getting around, but it looks like that is not a thing. We can grab a hundred credits there. It is worth mentioning that these geth are not attacking the station. They are here. They were being tested on, and they are being overridden by the VI of this station. They are not in control anymore. Anyways, as we come over here, we will discover that we have more Geth that we will face, including a Geth Destroyer, which, remember what I said, all we have to do is destroy its shield, and it will explode. And it will kill, hopefully, everything around it. Now we're just going to watch out, make sure that we don't die. Go ahead, charge this one, send that one flying, turn around, and finish off this one by shooting it in the flashlight on its head. We're still getting attacked, though, because we have more that are... We grab this palladium while we come down here, this med station there, and also we can go ahead and listen to Archer's log. This is Project Overlord with an emergency message to Cerberus Command. We've experienced a catastrophic security failure and are requesting assistance. We... What do you mean our outgoing comms are jammed? How can you do that? <laughs> when you try to play God, this is what happens, my friends. And now that we've gotten all of the weapons that we can over here, look at- I love charging across gaps like that. We're, we're, vanguards are so cool. Look at the moon. So this moon is going to collide with this planet soon. Go ahead and extend this walkway, leading closer. I love that Cerberus is not being secret here. <laughs> just everything just says Cerberus. Cerberus, Cerberus, Cerberus. But what a, what, I mean, look at this. Come on. That is amazing. So cool. Moving forward. Hoping that no geth try to attack us to take us down. Well, look at that. 
Who would have thought? We cannot charge these ones, unfortunately, but we can watch out for rockets. We're going to go ahead and actually uh, overload and send out a drone on these, keeping those busy while we get the rocket troopers down, which I would recommend focusing on them. The explosive drone from Tally doing what it needs to do, taking them out. We'll go ahead and... Unfortunately, overload is still on cooldown. Can you... Thank you. Oh, it popped its shields. Thank you. Looks like we dealt with all of the geth coming out from that way. None on that side, which is nice. So let's go ahead and bypass this door and get inside. Heading inside, we have more ammo because we're going to need it. This place looks like it is going to be a death trap. Now, we actually can do some very cool things here, and we can cheese this. We can actually skip a whole bunch of things by charging in, running around, trying to avoid as much combat as possible. We can do this if you're a vanguard. As soon as you hit these stairs, enemies will actually stop spawning, and you're fine. Just like that, we are now safe. We have skipped a whole section. We no longer need to worry about that. If you're an infiltrator, you could do that as well by cloaking. Uh, if you're fast, you could do it by sprinting, although on higher difficulties, I don't know if I would recommend that. And we're going to skip a whole other section. Now, this is a pretty wild thing, but what we're going to do is we're going to expose this capacitor, blow it up, and we're going to immediately start running to the next one. Because we're a vanguard, we can actually charge, which leads to a stun there. We open this one, we blow it up, and we actually only need to take down three. So we just keep running over here. We have another another geth that we're gonna go ahead and charge here. It's hard to keep doing this while everything is happening, but we're gonna go ahead, pop that, and boom, just like that. We skipped an entire section. explain you're telling me this guy was here the entire time you son of a gun and just like that we will get transmission disk destroyed surviving scientists located 312 experience 7500 credits the most of it we can get and 2000 palladium bought us some time, though probably not much. This isn't over yet. And who are you? Who did you say you were? Dr. Gavin Archer, chief scientist at this facility, and probably the only one left. You owe us that explanation. This is Project Overlord, an attempt to gain influence over the Geth by interfacing a human mind with a VI. The results have been less than satisfactory. You did what now? hate to see what you call a disaster. You can't dismiss the entire project. We did succeed, at least partially. My brother, David, volunteered to serve as a test subject, but his mind couldn't handle the VI connection. He's like a virus now, infecting our networks and seizing control of any technology he finds. It's why you had to destroy the dish. Imagine if his program got off world. How does he take control of electronics? This is a hybrid intelligence the likes of which I've never seen. I don't know where the man ends and the machine begins. Hmm. What's the worst case scenario? A technological apocalypse. Every machine, every weapon, every computer could be turned against us. If he hit the extranet, who knows where it would end. <laughs> you should have considered that before you started the experiment. We couldn't be expected to account for every outcome. Certainly not the abomination David has become. David, the VI has fortified itself in the main laboratory at Atlas Station. It's in lockdown now. To enter, you need to manually override security from our facilities in the Prometheus and Vulcan stations. 
which is going to be our next missions. It's also worth mentioning that if you did the Reaper IFF and you attained our last party member, this right here is about the part where uh, we would have that, that line that he says about that party member, but we're going to wait for that. How does the lockdown work? It's a fail-safe procedure in the event of an emergency. Normally, all three project leads have to agree to cancel the lockdown. I'm the only one left now. I can give my authorization, but you'll have to manually reset the other two yourself. And what happens if I have to kill your brother? Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. Hmm. Well, let's find out a little bit more about what we're getting into, like this current station. What happens on this station? This is Hermes Station, our communications uplink with the wider galaxy. If you hadn't destroyed the dish in time, the outcome would have been catastrophic. Agreed with that. And what about the stations we're heading to? Tell me about Vulcan and Prometheus stations. Vulcan Station is our geothermal plant. It generates power for the four outposts. Prometheus Station is a crashed Geth ship full of dormant machines. We use them for our experiments. Oh, good to know. Yeah, perfect. And what experiment? What went wrong with the experiment? David volunteered to interface with the VI to give it genuine consciousness. Theoretically, should have been safe, but with artificial intelligence, there's no such thing as safe. Then you shouldn't have attempted it. And what if you'd never attempted to find the Reapers, Commander Shepard? Where would the galaxy be then? Sometimes you have to ignore the risks. Uh-huh. And what about the final station that we have to head to? What can you tell me about Atlas Station? Atlas Station is the main laboratory where all of our VI experiments take place. It's your final goal once you've overridden the lockdown. It's also where my brother became something else. And Project Overlord itself? What is that? Tell me more about Project Overlord. We wanted to turn the Geth's religious impulse into a weapon. When we saw them following Saren, we realized they could be swayed. And if a proper figurehead was created, a virus with a face, if you will, the Geth might be controlled. That's an ambitious undertaking. It would be the perfect weapon. Victory without casualties. We could avoid war with the Geth altogether. That was the plan, anyway. It is actually a good plan, if you think about it. I'm heading out now. The other stations are all within driving distance. Best of luck, Commander. And one that we might see come to fruition at some point. We'll get 3750 recovered credits from that. And we'll find ourselves, we're still here on the Hermes station. We've already explored this. Archer's still here. You can talk to him if you need to find out anything. If you missed any of these, this power cells or anything like that, you can grab those here. Uh, you can pay your respects to these really cool coffins. I want to be in one of those. They look like an iPod and uh, like an I, the, uh, uh, what are AirPods? There we go. And let's go ahead and let's leave the hammer, uh, leave the area by using the hammerhead. It's also worth mentioning that you can't save in the hammerhead. So if you wanted to save your game, now is your chance because you won't be able to do it uh, for a little while. So let's go ahead and let's uh, let's leave the area and head to the next station that we need to go to. like this section a lot of people don't actually like the hammerhead at all they think that the hammerhead is is not very cool i think it's really fun to control as i said in the firewalker dlc now you can actually do this before doing the firewalker dlc by the way uh which is which is neat but you won't get a tutorial for it if you do overlord first so i recommend doing the firewalker dlc first uh you think? I mean, look at it. I love how it's like, organic life forms may want to take note of the absolute beauty that lies before you. And it's like, yeah, and you can see like these creatures flying. Oh my god, I mean, that. look at that. That is beautiful. I just, uh One of my favorite uh, DLCs when it comes to the location and how beautiful it is. But we do have, it kind of reminds me of Pandora from Avatar as well, the world of, of Pandora. 
it is worth mentioning uh, that you need to head to both of these stations, Vulcan Station or the the uh, Prometheus Station. You need to go to both uh, eventually. It doesn't matter which one you go to first, but we are going to head to the Vulcan one. And we're going to hopefully destroy this Ymir mech. These Ymir mechs can absolutely wreck you. Uh, so you want to be a little careful as you proceed. If you see the hammerhead start taking some serial damage, be a little bit careful before you proceed. Now, you can't actually get out to deal with these, which kind of stinks because it's a lot easier to deal with when you are out of them. But you want to find these here that we can actually go ahead and scan using triangle. And we can actually get these Cerberus data packets. And this used to be an achievement. It is no longer actually active in this volcano, or this waterfall is so loud. Um, it's not actually active in the Legendary Edition, this achievement. It's not It's not here anymore. But back with the OG version, you actually had to find all six of those and scan them, uh, which we will be doing because this, is, of course, is 100% playthrough, uh, even though the achievement doesn't exist. So we need to find six or five more of those uh, those yellow little platforms that we can do, which we will before we finish off this section. So if we head up here, this is kind of like a, probably like the most open world section, I guess, of the game, which is kind of weird to have. But we'll head up here into this beautiful area. Again, I mean, look at this, ugh, it's just so nice. You can see these really loud waterfalls all around us. We can kind of see these little stations over here. And these turrets are going to have to be taken out to make sure that they don't destroy us. We'll go ahead and just do our hoppity hops so that they don't do that. And hopefully, they don't end up killing us. Go ahead and take that out. And we can find the second package of the Data Hound. Go ahead and grab that. You're welcome. Four more remain. Now, again, you don't have to do this, but I we're going to do it. Coming around the corner here. We're going to be exploring a little bit more of the area and we'll find that we are actually getting pretty close to the Prometheus station as well on this side here but we found another area that has more units here including these Cerberus turrets again you want to be careful here because these can absolutely wreck you and lucky for us the hammerhead will actually tell us when it's starting to dam uh, get damage you can hear it another turret right on top here and with that turret destroyed we can start coming up here taking it a little easy to make sure that there's no more turrets, which it looks like we have gotten all of them. And we will find yet another data packet here that we can grab, meaning we now have three of six. And now you can see that we've actually changed, if I hide my camera here, you can actually see that we're a little bit closer now to the Prometheus station. So let's go ahead and see this. And I wish there was a map of some sort here, uh, but I don't believe there's any way of accessing a map of the area. Heading uh, over here just a little bit more, we'll be able to find another little area, and it looks like this might be safe. No enemies nearby for us to collect our fourth data pad. And at this point, we're actually going to, I'd like to get all of these data packets before going to Vulcan Station, just so that we can then hurry up and head to this. Now, you might notice these animals that we found in Mass Effect 1. Oh God, who did that? <laughs> okay, sure. Heading this way towards the Prometheus station. Again, we're not going over here. I just want to grab all of the data pads that we can. Or data packets. Well, looks like we're going to the Prometheus station because I accidentally went too close. And we are going to pick a party of Miranda, because again, this is all about uh, shield stripping and trying to do as much damage as possible. And we're also going to take Tally yet again for this. You could take Jacob. I mean, bringing Cerberus operatives with you isn't the worst idea, uh, but we're going to go ahead. We're going to bring Tally again. I would also recommend maybe Morden, uh, but in this case, it's going to be Tally. I just think that she needs she needs a little bit more uh, to know about the Geth before we proceed with the story of this game, if you know, if you know what I'm talking about. 
And we are totally fine. Nothing has changed. We haven't gotten any new levels, so let's head out. Bring the arc projector with us. Don't go that way. Oh, no. Stop doing that. <laughs> Anyways, we'll continue on here. And as we come up, we'll see Prometheus, this huge Geth ship here. We'll notice that the barrier has actually been erected around the facility, probably to stop us from getting in there. Analysis. Generators are providing power for main shield. And we can actually do something a little sneaky here. We are going to be targeted by a Geth cannon here. Warning, we are being targeted. And we can actually just get out of this area, and that will destroy the shield for us, and we don't have to worry about it at all, which is actually kind of neat. So we just go over to each of these, instead of us having to shoot it, which we can. We'll just wait here. Warning, we are being targeted. And we can get out. And you don't want to be in the force field because the force field actually does damage to this. But we're just going to watch out for this stuff. And as long as we're actually near these, instead of us having to shoot it ourselves, we just need the uh, the cannon to target us and it will destroy those for us. Which I just think is super, super cool. So we'll go ahead and destroy this generator. Hopefully not getting hit by that. And one more and this will take them all out. We'll go ahead and hit this one. This is the easiest and fastest way to deal with this mission, by the way, is to have the cannon itself destroy the shield generators, even if it is probably the least safe option. And then, of course, we can focus on the Geth cannon that was trying to attack us before, as long as we watch out for the targeting system that it has, which is actually easier than a lot of other turrets. It gives us so much time to get out of that. Now, we also noticed that there are things that we can pick up here. So let's go ahead and grab all of these that are around the area. 1,200 platinum in that one. So once we got that one, after everything is destroyed, now we can head over here and go inside Prometheus Station. Nice work. But that's not the only platinum we can get. There's actually a platinum crate out here that has 800, meaning we are now up to 2,000, and we're gonna head inside, and I'm sure we're gonna have to deal with some Getharoonies. That was the fastest loading screen ever. What? I did not agree to that. Ooh, this is not... So these are full of dormant Geth, supposedly. But the VI does have access to this giant Geth sitting in the center there. And that, my friends, cannot be good. Yet again, finding more dead operatives. Let's go ahead and listen to this research log. Now we just got word Atlas Station wants a dozen more Geth for the experiment. And I hope this means a breakthrough is close. Having a Geth Prime suspended in the center probably means we are going to have to fight said Geth Prime at some point. You love to see that. Continuing upstairs, keeping an eye out for any more items that we can find. And, of course, any angry, angry Geth. Let's go ahead and listen to this research log. Yeah, well, good thing we're going to be heading there next. Geothermal plant. I'm sure that's going to be safe. Oh, shoot. Go ahead and salvage this for 375 credits. Really? You can't give me a little more cash? We also have this little area here. Can we just take you out right now? No? Okay. Proceeding deeper. You can see all of the geth that are deactivated, destroyed, whatever they are inside these rooms. Probably gonna come out and attack us at some point. 
sure this is just a little terrifying. Imagine being here. Anyways, we can grab this med kit for 100 credits because we don't use med kits in this game. And we can research, uh, listen to this research log. That makes sense to me. Using this door to head deeper inside. Oh, okay. Love when doors just close in front of us. It's a little creepy, right? Coming around this way first, we'll find a bunch of dead geth. And get out of here. More equipment that we can salvage for 525 credits, but look at them. Hopefully these don't wake up. It looks like they probably won't just because of the way the models actually are. A little bit higher, uh... Hello. Uh-oh. David. David, let us out. Let's check this research log as well. That's actually pretty funny. Wearing Geth. Getting even deeper into Prometheus Station. Again. Okay. David closing stuff as we proceed. We do have another body here that we can listen to this research log. Well, what does the VI want? That's the question. Let's go ahead and jump over here, where we can actually salvage more lab equipment inside for 375 credits. A little, little, little hidden area. Not really hidden, but a little extra area, I should say. Checking over here to make sure there's nothing that we can grab. And heading back down to the way we have to go, jumping over the destroyed stuff. Look at, I mean, how cool is this though? This is so, what a great, okay. And these are the perks of this DLC. Like, yes, this DLC obviously has some problems when it comes to what it does, but the vibe, the atmosphere, it's pretty spooky. This looks like a room that's gonna be dealt with. It looks like we're probably gonna have some geth. Let's go ahead and research this. Uh-oh. Oh, they didn't, David didn't like that, okay. D David doesn't really like us. Exploring, I guess. We have one more room that we can go into. The only room that we can go into here. It is definitely like David is hurting us. Shutting doors as we proceed. Hopefully not electrocuting us. Oh no. It's like Citadel music, but super distorted. stairs that's where we have to go is over there which means that we have a little puzzle to solve here my friends each of these will actually slide these floor panels over so we're gonna tally can you it's fine so what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and move the floor panel we're actually going to move it to the right here uh, we can't we're gonna go ahead and move it down Uh, let's go ahead and move it up twice and then over once and over once more and this will hopefully allow us to come over here and grab the stuff that's on this which we can go ahead and get this med kit these power cells and this laptop that we can then access for 600 credits and then we're going to cross back over I love how we're crossing on just like a little bit just a little, just a little bit. There's nothing on that side that we can grab, but those are the items that we can grab. We just want to grab those now, just in case, you know, anything happens. So we're going to go ahead and move this back over to the left here. 
And the other option that we can do is these right here. So we're going to go ahead and move that up one. And we'll go ahead and move this so that we can slide these over. We're going to move this one here and then up. And there we go. Puzzle solved. So we're going to go ahead and head in this. I don't believe there's anything else that we can grab. So we're just going to continue over the, the new bridge that we just created leading over to this section here. Where we can find yet another med kit that we can grab for a uh, hundred credits. Again, it all adds up, my friends. And we're going to wait for this override switch. We're going to go ahead and hack this laptop first for 1,875 credits. And my friends, we are about to have the combat of the mission. Let's go ahead and take care of that camera because we don't want that anymore. And finally, let's flip the override switch and hope for the best. friends and now the gether are going to start activating and trying to murder us as you would expect from this which hey it happens hostile geth are now invading and attacking and it's fine they're trying to warn us that that hey this is happening we're we're well aware so let's go we just got to get back to where we were friends so i hope you i hope you kind of remembered where to go unfortunately for us you know there's a vi that has access to every single door so, we are going to be dealing with all of these Geth, and of course, a Geth Prime will be waiting for us as we proceed to the final area of this mission, uh, because of course it will. Ooh, already dead. We'll go ahead and pop that, and go ahead, and this Hunter is going to be here. We're going to go ahead and pop this drone. Hitting these as we go, taking care of this Rocket Trooper as well, hopefully taking that out before it hits us. Again, when you're playing a Vanguard with this rifle, you can kind of do some silly, silly things, my friends. It looks like we took care of almost all of the ones that were up there. We're going to head up here, head up, and we can take this guy out as well. Watching out for the rocket trooper that's over here. Remember, we do have Tally with us, so we could do some AI hacking if we so choose. But I see no reason to do that because these things die so, so quickly. Of course, we're going to take a rocket to the face. We're going to pop on this hunter here. We're actually going to overload this take out its shields and we're gonna go ahead and make this a friend we'll go ahead and ai hack that one while we take out this destroyer remember for destroyer all we need to do is charge it to get our shields back burn down those shields and uh, as soon as overload wow well, we don't have an overload so we'll just go ahead and finish it off unfortunately this geth hunter attacking us we'll go ahead and overload that and charge this destroyer taking out its final health yeah i would say a geth outbreak has been declared on this ship nothing else that we can find in here there's actually no new rooms that appear once we start this part of the thing we've got pretty much all of the items that we can at this point at least you know that's the hope no more seem to be over here so we're gonna keep spawning that one being crushed you love to see it that one not being crushed you hate to see it continuing on as much as we can geth troopers are here including a geth hunter we're gonna go ahead and pop this and this i do wish that we had an overload from our girl tally however we do have something a little bit better once her loyalty mission is completed which will be you know at some point we will do that uh let's go ahead and get this drone rocking and rolling and see if we can start taking out these guys as we proceed a little bit closer finishing them off at a little close range now we could be switching to the geth plasma shotgun to take these out but Honestly, once you pick up this rifle, I see very little reason to play any other weapon. It's just so good. Ah, screw it. Let's use the plasma shotgun. It's been a little while. This game got us through the early, or this gun got us through the early game. We'll switch to it now. Oh, that gave me, that made me dizzy. And of course, we will be dealing with the prime as we proceed into the final area of this the death trap. Taking out the shield with one hit from that hunter. And it looks like we have more that we can go, so we'll go ahead and charge over here. One shotting that. One shotting that. Missing completely with that. Charging this one. This is a rocket trooper, so we want to go ahead and take that out as a sap. 
And those are all dead, so look at that. I mean, hey, we're doing great. Let's go ahead and open this door. Again, we do, we do want to be aggressive and careful at the same time because we're playing a vanguard and you always want to insanity my friends is no joke if you missed any items i guess you could probably grab those now but i would i would recommend getting them before dealing with geth nodes 20 through 35 that's a lot of geth and there we go we got a geth prime now activated we're gonna go ahead hit it with a big shield and we can go ahead and immediately start warping, getting this explosive drone on, and hopefully taking out this prime super quickly, which we're going to be able to do. We're not even going to worry, honestly, about... Uh, we're not going to worry about hacking it. I just... AI hacking is kind of a... I mean, it's fairly useless. It's a fairly useless ability. Now, we don't need to kill these, but we will just for funsies. Go ahead and target this guy. I'm pretty sure we could just use that to leave, but we'll go ahead and take these out so that potentially they don't become a problem for the cleanup crew that we will inevitably be seeing come here to Prometheus Station. And I believe that was the final geth we could deal with. Oh, I lied to you. There's more. They just keep coming, baby. Let's go ahead and knock this one. Geth Hunter being taken down. There we go. Do we still have more? Oh, apparently that rocket trooper survived. Don't know how. Anyways, that's all the geth that we can do. Let's go ahead and leave Prometheus Station. And let's go ahead and complete the mission here. Hopefully receiving everything that we possibly can. I love that. The Promethean Station is just a lot of fun. Getting to cruise through. Taking out a ton of geth as we go. It's a good time. And successfully issued override command for Prometheus Station, 312 experience, 7,500 credits, and 2,000 platinum, which is everything we can get. So we're going to be done with that, and we are going to finish the data hound stuff because I accidentally went too close to the Prometheus Station and activated it. The hammerhead transition scenes are actually very cool. So we only have two more of these data packs that we can find here on Ita. Ita. Hopefully leading us to where we need to go. And I don't think the enemies respawn. Thank you for the luck wishing. And we just need to keep an eye out for the final two ones that we can find. Yeah. At literally everything everything on this dang planet is a aesthetically pleasing even even the the crashed geth ship was aesthetically pleasing you know what i mean anyways we want to start heading this way and then we'll start heading to vulcan station as soon as as soon as we find our final things which we are going to find one over here and we need to keep an eye out for any more turrets it looks like there it is i almost spoke too soon and said there's none ways is turrets and there we go the second one has been destroyed and we are clear to grab our fifth i believe data packet we've got almost got all of them only one more remains oh okay thank you for saying that for me anyways we can also see that there's a little bit of a lip down here that you can see which actually just again yet again i mean what a beautiful look at those look at those things man you can't shoot them don't don't you know don't waste your ammo. So, we'll just start heading towards the Vulcan Station, which is where we need to go. And inevitably, we will be able to find our final uh, data packet that we need to grab there. Our sixth one, if you will. Which looks like it might be over this way here. So, we'll go ahead and jump this gap. Or not. Pretend we jumped that successfully. And we'll go over here and hopefully find our final uh, data packet which looks like we sure can, right over by the entrance to the Vulcan Station. And just like that, we would get the achievement Data Hound. Of course, that doesn't exist. It's actually not even a journal entry, by the way. Um, it just tracks it in-game, and therefore it was necessary for us to do that. And if you're playing on an older version of the game, well, at least you get it. So we're going to continue this way and transition to Vulcan Station, the Geothermal Station. And for this mission, as always, we're going to be taking Miranda in tally.
I love that scene. Looks like... Unfortunately for us, it would appear that the VI keeps stopping Archer from really talking to us and telling us anything about what's happening. So we're going to proceed over the lava. Probably don't want to get caught in that. Probably would not be the best thing that could happen to us. But look at how cool that looks. I love it. Heading inside, we'll see these steam vents here. We're going to wait until those go away. Oh, so let's go ahead and rise up here. Look at that. That was handy. We'll see that there's another section over there that we need to get to. But I like just looking around and making sure that we got everything. Look at how cool this is. Don't land in the lava, lava bat. We can even land on top of the, the uh, I don't know, refinery stations that they have here, whatever these are. And we can go ahead and just bounce over. You thought those vents were dangerous. Anyways, this is dangerous. We are face to face with yet another Cerberus turret. And it is almost, like I said, it's almost more dangerous to deal with these when we are in the Hammerhead than it is anything else. And just like that, the Cerberus turret whoop, is destroyed. <laughs> and the VI is mad about that, or David is mad about that. Whoever you wanna talk to, it looks like there's actually a little bit of a T that we can go in here. And it's worth mentioning that you actually don't have to destroy this turret. If you just go past, you can just go woo and you can get over here no problem where we can find a little source of iridium again not a huge thing but we want to get everything in the game and the way that we actually have to go is to the right so if that turret's still up you would just be like whoa bye Scanning area analysis debris field provides adequate support for vehicle and now we have a uh, frogger we we need to listen we need to play frogger in, in in Mass Effect 2, which is actually pretty neat. I just think it's a nice touch. From my perspective, the Jedi are evil. Sorry, sorry, I just had to, it looked like Mustafar. What do you want from me? Anyways, we'll use this to help us boost up here. And it looks like we found our way. Oh, looks like we need to park our car, our hammerhead head inside to the station. Warning. Automated controls are offline. Core systems have been compromised. And it is actually kind of neat that uh, the lava is not actually going to, like, one-shot you. It's not actually that big of a deal. So if you do get hit by that lava, you don't have to worry about it too much. And I'm assuming that once we get into this place, we're going to be dealing with even more enemies because, of course, we are. David, the VI, is not kind to us. As, like I said, we see some Loki mechs up ahead. We're going to go ahead and switch to the rifle here just to start taking these down before they activate. Shooing through that armor. I do like the Geth Plasma Shotgun for synthetics. It is quite good. So we might switch to that. Yeah, let's go ahead. Let's do it. Go ahead and target this one. It doesn't really matter because it's going to go flinging over there and... No? Are you kidding me? Whatever. The music here, quite good. And we can start heading inside here. Where we can find a research log and a valve control. Now, I would recommend if you want to hear everything and see everything in the game... Oh, look it. There's our there's our hammerhead. We actually want to listen to this research log. Destroy that camera. Listen to this research log before activating the valve control. And now we can access this valve control, which we can bypass, giving us manual control to this. And it looks like we have a new area that we can go to. So we're going to head back to the hammerhead. 
don't have any other en enemies to deal with. The only enemies we have in this little section right here was just those three Loki mechs. Not a big deal whatsoever. Back in the hammerhead, we will destroy this camera. <laughs> don't judge me. And we will use the steam vent that is now active to propel us up here to the next area that we need to go to. Again, while keeping an eye out for anything that might help us on our journey and our research and all of that, which we will find right next to a Cerberus turret. Oh, shoot. It's actually only uh, 400 Iridium. And if you don't care about that, like if you don't, if you just, you don't care about getting everything, you can just blow past this and not worry about it. It is a little bit spicy of a turret, to be honest with you, because we don't really have anywhere we can go for cover. And there we go, turrets destroyed, and now we can collect the Iridium that's here. Four hundred iridium received and continuing on to the geothermal lava plant looks like we yet again are going to have to do some frogger and you can actually see the lamp post being where we need to start heading to is over in that direction so that is where we are going to head hopefully we can get there without dying to lava again the lava is pretty nice to us these rocks will sink uh they won't last forever so we'll go ahead very, very easy to head over here, by the way. So we're gonna come up here. We're actually going to head to the left here. We'll go ahead and we'll use this steam vent that will propel us up. We're going to head here to this left section where we're actually going to be dealing with uh, another two turrets. So you actually need to be a little bit careful here as we as we try to see if we can get these these turrets. Now, I would recommend hiding over here because you can actually make the turrets go away pretty quickly by just dipping back and then proceed forward. And apparently they went away. Okay. Well, looks like we were able to... Team, I'm not sure how we did that, but hey, uh, if you copy what I just did, maybe, just maybe, you'll be able to do that. The turrets are gone? I ain't gonna look a gift horse in the mouse. That That's awesome. In the mouse? You know what I mean. Apparently, that is actually a known bug. It's possible to collect the Iridium without having to fight them at all. You have to get your timing right. You use the lower shelf of that plateau, so this area here, where the, you know, that area. You use that. You, um, you jump the lip just a little bit until the turrets start to deploy, and then you return, which is kind of what we did. Then you jack jump back up again as the turrets are retracting, and they won't deploy again. And then you just get them. So apparently that is something that you can do. I just accidentally found that out. I've never done that before. Now, it appears that these are also super buggy. I actually reset to see if I could figure out a way of making that consistent. And I can't, but what I can say is that there's also a way that you can actually make them uh, remain there. So if you're not able to do what I did the first time, you can actually do this and they'll stay open and you can actually just jump, fire and go back down and uh, they'll, they'll never be able to hit you doing this. And you'll actually be able to get both of them by doing this, this simple little thing here. Now, before proceeding up this dangerous Mustafar River of uh, death, we're going to use this vent that will propel us up here because there's actually another little hidden thing of Iridium that we can get, and it's kind of out of the way, uh, and you kind of need to be paying attention to, to see that, but that's why that vent is actually there, is to help you get up here, and that, my friends, is going to be the last little thing that we can get, and that's 800 Iridium there, and now we can start doing this, uh, this river of death that lays before us, this time having to go upstream and hopefully, uh, you know, not getting cooked while we proceed to do that. You'll actually see those two big garage doors. That, my friends, is where we are froggering. And we should be able to get there just easy peasy. And then we'll get a prompt to get out of the hammerhead here. And they immediately put us in a room that seems awfully quiet. We're going to go ahead and destroy that camera because we don't want that looking at us. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. If we proceed forward, we'll find, well, just the broken camera that I just shot. We're almost done, my friends, with the Vulcan station. Warning. Pressure levels in Oof. 
I'm going to go ahead and destroy that explosive device, which will actually blow out the area there, allowing us to get access to it. But we are going to come over here and bypass this as well. Let's go ahead and do that. Which will shut off this steam and allow us to actually head down here to grab this data pad that we can access. Whoa! For 1,125 credits. And then we'll go back the other way that we shot that explosive on that pushed the barrel or whatever this is away so that we can now climb up this way. Grab this med kit for an extra 100 credits because we don't use med kits. And as we come up here, we'll actually notice that there are a few mechs here. We can actually destroy these, which will hopefully take out a few of the Loki mechs that were there, which is really nice for us. It's kind of a hidden thing, but we will also, now that those are gone, if we proceed forward, we're actually going to end up dealing with assault drones that are going to start coming down here any moment. We'll proceed forward. There they are. And we can just take these out, hopefully pretty quickly. One of them gone. We need to watch out for others and go ahead and get into cover here. Hopefully able to take this one out just like that. And then hopefully we can grab... There's a lot of assault drones here, my friends. And it looks like that one is down. Not able to do much. We're going to go ahead and overload that. We're going to get into cover. Watch out for any Loki mechs we find here. Looks like there are some that are approaching. We're not out of the woods yet, my friends. We're going to go ahead and switch over and hopefully take this out before they kill us. Take out that one. Watch out for this Loki mech. We're going to charge here, get some cover, and immediately back up. We're going to go ahead and overload that one. Almost taking it out. Unfortunately, without that max overload from Miranda, she's just not able to one-shot. Unfortunately, we did lose going to back up a bit here because unfortunately we can't do much else we're going to run forward we want to see if we can grab there we go unfortunately that overload missing switching to the smg so that we can take these down that should be all of the assault drones that we find here but hitting this here really helps so that we the explosives that were here really helps so that we don't have to deal with three additional loki mechs to everything else that happens there that actually can be a very dangerous part of this uh, of this mission in fact but it looks like we got everything that we can here so we're going to continue on across this very scary geothermal area with oh yeah sure let's just climb some pipes reminds me of terminator another area reminded me yeah it sucks anyways let's go ahead and take out that camera because i don't trust it and as we get up here, we'll notice another platform that actually has some ammo on here that is worth grabbing because we are very, very low on that. Switching back to the Geth Plasma shotgun so that we can do some damage. And we have a door here that we can use, and I highly recommend doing so because there's a wall safe that we can access for 1,500 credits. And also, another research log. Okay, and unfortunately, we won't be able to access it again, or else his face will just keep showing up in that horrible, horrible noise. And my friends, we're going to continue on, and I'm sure we're going to have to deal with some other stuff. We'll grab this med station for another 100 credits, because remember, <laughs> we don't use metagels. And we already saw that there was a Loki mech that was kind of hiding here. And unfortunately for us... That isn't going to be the only enemies we're dealing with. We're going to go ahead and send our squad Taking in first. Cover. Taking cover. Got trouble. And immediately we're going to be dealing with not only Loki mechs, we're going to be dealing with assault drones and, unfortunately for us, well, a Ymir mech as well. But we're going to help our team take out these Loki mechs. taking them out before we get into danger ourselves here because there is a lot of them and not only that but we're also going to be dealing with assault drones that hopefully we can take out before they become a huge problem we'll go ahead and switch to our rifle here just so we can start hitting those the loki mech or the ymir mech starting it's uh it's attack on us now we can actually cheese this here just by sitting right where we are and we won't really have to deal with the ymir mech it's kind of crazy we're gonna send this drone here as well 
And the drone, of course, is going to be taken out so fast. But you can see, I mean, it's kind of kind of wild how easily we can deal with this just by hiding in this door a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't mean it means that we don't get to uh, celebrate the power of a vanguard. But, you know, sometimes, sometimes that's OK. Let's see if we can actually take out these drones. Kind of kind of cheese, but hey, if you know me, you know I like my cheese. We're going to go ahead and hit this. Watch out for the rocket that's about to come at us. Luckily for us, it didn't hit Tally, although it very easily could have. We'll go ahead and take out this assault drone as well because we the SMG is so good at dealing with shields. And now that all we have is the Ymir mech with just some health left, we're going to go ahead and charge and go ahead and melee it. There we go. That was the probably one of the cheesiest ways to handle this mission and this section, but that is can that can be really, really brutal. So we'll go ahead and access this computer for 2,625 credits. But there is so much cover that you have in this room as well. So, I mean, if you're struggling, that's the way to do it. But otherwise, I mean, there's, there's plenty of room. Don't look at me. And we'll continue forward. I recommend saving because once you mo move on, you actually won't be able to save. Once you bypass this door, you can't save. And the end of the Vulcan Station. We did have a uh, renegade interrupt there, but didn't feel worth doing. And just like that, my friends, we will complete the mission, get 312 experience, putting us at level 29 successfully issued the override command for Vulcan, sta uh, Vulcan Station. We got 9,000 credits, which is the most that we can get, and 2,000 Iridium, which is also the most we can get from that mission. Commander, you've done it. The lockdown has been cancelled. You can now breach Atlas Station and end this nightmare. You'll need to find the main server room there to shut down the VI experiment. Good luck. Well, sounds like a plan to me. Lockdown at Atlas Station has been canceled. The Rogue VI there must be shut down. So, let's head there for the final area of the entire Overlord DLC, Atlas Station. We'll just follow the area to tell us where to go. And if we head over by this waterfall, we'll find a landing where we were actually able to find one of the six data packets that we could get here. And my friends, we're heading into the Atlas Station. And my friends, this is the perfect ending to the first part of the Overlord DLC. We have another big section here to cover as we proceed deeper into this, and I think that that would be best served in its own video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of uh, Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition on Insanity Difficulty. Sincerely appreciate you guys. A huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres of these videos, and an even bigger shout out to those of you supporting the channel over on Patreon.com. And hey, uh, don't forget to leave a like and comment. It really does help these videos. It pushes them up into the algorithm, and hopefully one day uh, we'll have a lot of people checking out the best playthroughs of Mass Effect 2 on on uh, on YouTube. Let me know if you guys do that Renegade Interrupt and how you feel uh, personally about the Overlord DLC, because of course, 
Uh, I, there's there's good reason for the controversy surrounding it. I don't blame anybody for not even wanting to do this DLC. Uh, but because this is a completionist playthrough, that's something that we're going to do. And uh, yeah, while the story can be a little problematic, the gameplay itself is quite fun. Thank you guys for watching. And remember, never give up, never surrender to a rogue AI VI. David. Bye, everyone.